From time to time I have been asked to mention composition. Until now I have refrained from offering advice because I regard seeing a picture a gift, similar to a musician interpreting a work from a sheet of notated paper for the first time or from memory. It is something that cannot be explained and that technology will not replace. I can offer guidelines, but interpreting them in the field is another matter. F8 or 200 ISO will not make much difference to a composition. A small aperture does increase depth of field, but I will treat that as presumed knowledge, so I am not showing the metadata. That can be learned from some of my other programs. Successful composition is dependent on many other factors. Weather plays a major part. Your super-duper camera, unless it has weather seals, won't add much, but getting soaking wet will. OK, I come clean. The coach is just behind me, providing much-needed shelter. I'm inclined to clone out that white house, and you can see the dog in the bushes. On the other hand, and whilst in Scotland, if the weather is kind, then look for reflections, particularly in the sheltered waters of large locks. For this type of shot, I prefer symmetry, as opposed to unequal halves. A lead-in draws the eye into the picture, and creates the third dimension. Very important for a two-dimensional portrayal. I took this shot in the evening, and the westering sun behind me has warmed the colours naturally. This is a grab shot. On my way to the last image, I happened to look back to the giant's gate. Contrashore shots always look dramatic, but while spot metering, and quite by chance, my two actors suddenly appeared. I don't know them, by the way. There were other people about, but I didn't want them, so I had to be quick. This is where the experienced photographer, with technique at their fingertips, has the advantage of acting quickly before the composition, albeit not planned, disappears, possibly forever. The lead-in here sweeps into view, one that is almost without people, sometimes a requirement of my professional work. Difficult in Birmingham, near the city centre. Move away, and graffiti takes its place. But that is for another type of photography and market. With a lead-in, you want something interesting at the other end. Here, a church. Quite a tricky shot, and not only the lighting, but people do. Quite a bit of work required in post-production, helped by spot metering a highlight so that detail can still be restored. Seem to have avoided noise in shadows, by the way. I hope so. I love symmetry in church shots, and things don't get much better than the rose window at Durham Cathedral at the far end. Getting shots without people is an art in itself, and this was taken on my return visit later in the day. Handheld, because not many cathedrals permit the use of tripods, so time to brush up on my hand-holding skills, helped, of course, by the dual image stabilizers in camera and lens. I am not against a composition that removes symmetry in a shot, even though that may have been the intention of the master craftsman of this magnificent building. However, notice that in shooting from the side, I have maintained a sense of symmetry in the choir stalls, which I feel holds the composition together. Again, I compose to one side at Aston Hall, removing much of an empty floor, and I did like the fireplace. Notice, too, one of the hidden benefits of micro four-thirds. Obliged to handhold and keeping the ISO at 200 for maximum quality, depth of field is extended even at F4, helped by the 
hyperfocal distance, that is, focusing in about a third of the way into the shot as depth of field extends twice as much beyond the point of focus than in front. I did a similar trick at Strawberry Hill House, but now straight down the middle, framed by the doors. I noticed after I had taken the shot that the composition is slightly offset, a subconscious reaction rather than planned at the time. Very often the best compositions are achieved intuitively, even in error. This is not taken subconsciously or in error. There were many people in the hall, so I have hidden them with the steps. A grab shot because there was also considerable activity on the steps. An access road leads underneath the Queen's house, and immediately the symmetry of the arches attracted my attention. People problem again, solved by a bit of patience and a quick snap. Under more ideal situations, I might have removed the notice, but maybe a job for good old Photoshop. Not as many people visit downhill in Northern Ireland, but there is still a chance of someone wandering into the scene because of the open landscape. I describe this fascinating place in my Causeway Coast program, but there is a connection between the temple and the house, now just a shell, and finding this composition brings everything together historically and aesthetically. This is good when you can find a composition that also has a historical relevance. This view from Lafric Terrace of Grasmere is well known, but unless there is a fantastic reflection, you are in danger of ending up with just a lot of water. Super reflections do not hang about for the photographer, and as you may gather, I was a few minutes late for this one. Therefore, to remove the impact of unexciting water, I selected a viewpoint a bit to one side, emphasising instead the glorious autumn tints, and I might add that the remnants of the reflection didn't last very long. I wasn't late for this one. Morning light and mist and a perfect reflection of Skidow.